Welcome back to another episode of VAC Tech Talk. Today, joining us, we have Paul Milano. Paul's been with the company for over 25 years, but Paul is also one of the owners of Milano Engine and Machine before VAC purchased Milano Engine and Machine back in 1997. So uh, Paul's uh, history is basically engine building all his life. He started with Milano Engine and Machine when his dad started it. He was only 15, so he's been doing this. You know, we don't want to give away his age, but let's just say it's a, let's just say it's at least 60 years. That's <laughs> why so we're not giving away his accurate age. So he's got plenty of experience. He's been he's done everything under the sun from tugboat engines, diesel, rotary, plane stuff. I mean, you name it, he's seen it. If you take an engine apart, put it in a box and shake it up and give it to him. Even if he's never ever seen it before, he will put it together and it'll run perfectly. We do have testimonials. We do have some people out there that can vouch for that with like a 1926 Bentley engine. Anyway, back to the BMWs. Today, we're gonna talk about bearing clearance and we're gonna focus on how to measure, how to properly measure and calculate bearing clearance. We're gonna be discussing the VAC bearings, but whatever we talk about today is gonna to apply to any bearing, any rod, any engine that you're building. We're gonna talk about, let's talk about the tools first. We have micrometers. This micrometer, these are carbide tip micrometers. We like to either go with Mitutoyo or, or something that's a really a, a quality name brand. And these are always calibrated. We have standards that we calibrate with. So this particular micrometer is set to read the journals. And then this micrometer here is a bearing micrometer. And what makes this different is down on this tip here, there's a, a ball bearing. This way you can actually measure on the inside of a bearing shell. So when we go to measure, we're locating this this way and then we go and we read our measurement and then we have our accurate measurement on that bearing shell. Quick note, when you're measuring bearings you try to measure right in the center. The ends will measure a little different than the center so we try to measure right in the center when we're calculating. The other the other part of figuring out the calculations, there's three things we need to do. We need to know our journal diameter. We need to know our big end diameter after it's assembled and torqued. And then we need to measure the shells. So we will take the diameter of the big end, subtract the diameter of a journal, and what we're left with is going to be the total of two shells together. Then we subtract this from the other amount and then we're left with our clearance. So how do we properly measure the big ends? The big ends are measured on a machine, a sun and ride hone and ride gauge. There's basically three pins. There's two that are fixed and then there's the side that moves the measure. So when we take the connecting rod, we put it on there first, we hang it, we square it up. These spaces are all nice and ground. They should be by quality manufacturers. You square it up on the fixture and you're gonna get, you're gonna see these images and maybe some video of it as well. And when this squares up to the face, you kind of let it take its set and you get your reading. There's a range, everything has a range. The crankshaft has a range, min-max, the big end has a range. Bearing manufacturers have targets and have ranges. That's why it's difficult to uh, really give you an exact number on a bearing that is used in different engines. So the bearing that's used in different engines can yield different results. It can give you different clearances. And it's dependent on your big end, and it's dependent on your rod journal. So, for example, we have here today one of the Arrow XT rods. These are heavier 
turbo rods that we offer. And then we have a Carrillo. This is more of an NA rod, but still capable, very capable of, of good power handling. And then we have an SP rod, which is also, this design is more NA and still very capable. Now all three of these are gonna get measured. And when they get measured, you will see that the results are gonna differ from every manufacturer. So on an S54, we'll go back, on an S54, the big end, there's a nominal diameter in which is 53 millimeter, but there's also a range to work with. We convert everything into thousandths of an inch. This journal has a, a nominal diameter and metric as well, and that's converted to thousandths of an inch. And then when we measure the bearings, they're probably supposed to be like a two millimeter bearing. We measure it in thousands and we do our math. So we have a little cheat sheet here basically. The rod big end range is between 2.066 and 2.0871. What we do is we set our gauge for the big for the largest diameter possible and then we measure according to that so we're either going to be we're going to hit the target we're going to be just shy of or we're going to be just over then the crank journal is 49 millimeter minus 0.025 which is when you convert that it's almost one thousandth of an inch it's nine nine tenths plus eight so which means really just round it to a thousand so over here 0 0.001 so when you do the math on the 1.9291 and 1.9281, you have a thousandths tolerance here. So let's assume that you're working with a, a crankshaft that falls on the smaller end, your bearing clearances are going to be larger. If you work with one that's on the larger end, then your bearing clearances are going to be tighter. So you have too many factors to really know exactly what bearing clearance you're gonna get from any one bearing. When we're properly building an engine and we care to the, to the tenth degree and you're really trying to do the absolute best and get all tolerances as close as possible, many times we'll buy multiple or open multiple boxes of bearings and we'll measure all the different bearings, write the sizes down, and then we know what we have and we just use the, the bearing that best fits that, that journal. So on this, on this crankshaft, when we measured this guy, we ended up with 1.9286. So that actually ended up being right in the middle of the range of 1.9291 and 1.9281. So Arrow, this is the Arrow Stroker crank that we offer. Arrow nailed this dead nut center for us, right in the middle, perfect. That's what we like. When we measured the rods, we were right at that maximum. I believe the arrow came in about a tenth under. Uh, the Carrillo was right about a tenth under, and the SP was about a tenth over. Which means we have two tenths difference on those rods. So if we're using these bearings with, with the SP, we're going to be a tenth more clearance, and then if we're using them with these, we're going to be a tenth less clearance if we were to base it on that 2.0871 big end dimension. So, really, ultimately, when you're doing this, bearing clearances are, are preferential. There are some guys that say, oh, we we want to run a thou and a half, we want to run two thou, or we want to run a thou clearance. The math that we just did on this crank is a thou. It gives us a thou clearance. But these bearings are coded, and the coatings will equal to about a half a thou on both shells combined. So that means that one thou clearance is really about a thou and a half. Some people say, oh, but, but you're still taking clearance away. The coated bearings that we have, Calico does these for us, and they've been doing them for probably about two decades now. People say, well, what makes this a better bearing than anything else? Well, the coatings that are on here, it's like having Teflon 
in your frying pan. Fry an egg in a stainless steel pan and fry it with one that's Teflon coated and you tell me the results. The number one reason why bearings fail is because of heat. The Teflon coatings on these bearings will basically help eliminate that. So it's going to eliminate the heat that's generated on cold startup when there's not enough lubrication or oil starvation when you're cornering. That's when these bearings and the coatings really start to shine. When you have perfect oil pressure, nothing matters. Everything is good. So you're just looking to prevent that that starvation that happens on occasion, which when you add it all up, it starts to break the bearing down. Uncoated bearings will start to break down. Once you break down through the top layer of the bearing, then the bearing is not long for life. That's the skinny on these bearings, and that's the skinny on, on getting all the dimensions right. Not sure, Paul, you have a, any, any words of wisdom that you want to add? No, it's just that you know, like like you said about the bearings or anti friction bearings. So therefore you know, you'll generate less heat and you will practically generate no heat even with metal to metal contact. Yeah, well even technically you'll never yeah, exactly with low oil pressure. That's where you're really getting the, the yeah. biggest bang for your buck out of these bearings. So remember when you go to assemble an engine don't, don't say Tony told you, don't say anybody told you. You need to measure everything. And you need to have the proper measuring tools. They need to be calibrated. And, and you know, when you're, when you're measuring a thousandth of an inch, for example, I mean, uh, a human hair, most human hairs are somewhere between two thousandths to three thousandths of an inch. So if we're looking to split hairs, pardon the pun, if you're trying to hold two tenths, that means you're taking a hair that's two thousandths and you're dividing it ten times. So imagine taking your hair, slicing that thing into ten slices, and then measuring that. That's two tenths of a thousandth of an inch. So just to put things in perspective for you. So uh, we don't want to be too long-winded here. Obviously, we could talk about engine building and engines for eternity. We just wanted to share some of our knowledge, some of our experience with you. The many years of experience, as you can tell. I mean, he's got great, I got great too, so you know. Uh, let us know if you have any questions. Feel free to comment, share, and anything else that goes with that. You know, we're, we're here for you, ultimately. We appreciate you. Thanks again, and uh, we hope you join us at the next uh, VAC Tech Talk. Take care, guys.